Hey, this is Brian from The Sleeping Elephant. I'm going to review Impossible to Ignore, Creating Memorable Content to Influence Decisions by Carmen Simon. This is a must-read book, and it's better than expected. It's about psychological influence and uses techniques from neuroscience and psychology. And the big highlight of this book is the way influence is captured in the mind. And what Carmen Simon expresses is the memory. And it doesn't matter if you could remember something or you want to remember something. It's something that triggers in you. And I found out about this book through Mike Cernovich and Scott Adams. Here's the 15 types of influences for people's memory. Context, cues, distinctiveness, emotion, facts, familiarity, motivation, novelty, quality of information, relevance, repetition, self-generated content, sensory intensity, social aspects, and surprise. Many readers will take this in as a business book, something they can learn business into how to influence people. However, for the typical individual, you need to understand how the memory is being influenced so you don't get caught up into being a sheep or a follower or to be wary of the marketing packages that people are selling to you. Many marketers and business people will, will take this in as try to expand their control of the audience and how to influence their memory so that they will remember their brand. It made you look, these cues that hit the memory will bring a, as she called, a sweet anticipation of the product of whatever is being influenced. Carmen gives advice for making messages repeatable and what makes it somewhat like a meme, influencing people through stories. And stories will be more of the future because there's so much clickbait and shallow type of marketing that stories kind of reign true. If you can connect with people through a story, a storyteller is always remembered. How much content is too much, how the brain decides on what is important or not. And she uses mental schemas as these shortcuts, somewhat like the social proof. You have these ideas and memories in your brain. And these choices are being influenced to make you want to pick that schema that is easy. So there's no real depth in this. There is that shortcut of the mind wanting to save energy since they try to get this proof, especially with the neuroscience, that your brain takes about 20% of your body's energy. In terms of rewards, you want to be able to predict these actions, somewhat in the realm of understanding the expectation, what is going to happen. These great expectations, such as what Charles Dickens would write about. The cues create an expectation. Where am I being led to get the biggest reward for the lowest amount of work? Another big point of this book to take from is attention and the focus of attention. How can we get someone's attention? And attention draws you in, whereas things can be ignored such as if you look at the cover there's a butterfly in the front and there's one butterfly that stands out and the other two are just a solid white so you're going to stand out when you're unique but if you're in too much variety say a rainbow nothing really stands out or if you're all alone and also in terms of expectations this is a very good lesson i learned from this book is it's a concept of the young and the old for instance if someone's playing the piano and one person's 45 years old and the other one's six years old, but they sound exactly the same, they will be paying attention and it'll stir up a future for the young person. We want to see and predict and we have great expectations for that six-year-old piano player, what they're going to become. So that captures our attention and will spark more of a memory than to say someone who's 40 because they've been, someone assumed they've been playing the piano forever and they've kind of reached a potential. So that type of strike in your mind is not going to hit as hard compared to the young person. Something to think about. For the surprise, there is an emotional engagement, a amygdala hijack almost. See, it triggers a danger, a fear, a burst of dopamine. We love surprises because they could scare us or we want to be, we get bored of the daily draw. A break in the pattern of expectations can really influence you. You're always going to remember that surprise, not the nine to five data entry work that you're doing at work. And you could also use these surprises to almost manipulate beliefs. And Carmen chose very good words for this one chapter. It's called sweet anticipation, where we're not bored, where we're right in front of something that's going to happen. You're excited to go on that roller coaster ride. Your imagination and creativity is being spawned and bursting with anticipation and emotion. A clear action is going to be in front of you. It's not reason or logic. It's raw emotion. And in terms of neuroscience, it's completely triggering the dopamine burst in your brain. We are looking for rewards, wanting, 
liking and learning at the same time. It's never a dull moment with the Motley Crew. It's just straight up abstract pleasures. And also understand the darkness, not so much the Tao or dark arts or anything out of your consciousness or you repress or don't want to know about where you have a degree of uncertainty, there are numerous possible outcomes and a mystery. Not so much a game, but a real mystery. It's a mysterious delay between the outcome that's gonna happen. It could be the worst case scenario, or it could be something completely unpredictable, almost like a black swan. And some tips for delaying predictability are some texts that they use in videography or you see in movies, and this is something to Take note of how, if you're just going to be a screen watcher, you should know this. They use slow motion. They cut to a new scene before an outcome is realized. Somewhat like a jump cut. And they turn predictable into a not so predictable scene. Repetition is boring. It could be a, a spinning wheel that just keeps on spinning. But notably, there is techniques to make a message repeatable. A meme or something you keep on saying to yourself. It could hit something in your brain. Like a wax on, wax off by... Danielson or anger leads to the path to the dark side. Just classics or cliches that these statements can resonate. Somewhat like you see Trump make America great again. These messages have spreading power. They hit a spot in you that influences you. And when you think of impossible ignore, you have to think of visuals and not written words. For instance, a picture is worth a thousand words. And this is something I learned from Mike Cernovich, who always mentions optics, where it's the visual cues that really hit you, especially males. And with the increased screen time, you're seeing a dumbed out nation, not a dumbed out nation, but a dumbed out world now, where screen time so much, you are seeing right before you, 2017, collective delusion. Visual metaphors, as well as these jump cuts that you see in the scenes, they they just get you gripped and, and they get that dopamine burst completely sucks you in. It is taking the energy from you. Whereas if you get real experience in life and you go outside, you're pressing yourself onto life. You're not being sucked into a black hole of dumb knowledge and negativity. And you're seeing pictures take over, such as with you see with Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook, where it's a, a look and understand type of thing. You're not reading. You're not creating your own stories. You are just being a zombie. Some last takeaways are to account for black swans account for the unpredictable how these surprises hit your memory real hard and influence you the fear-based functions stuff to protect you how uncertainty is enhanced with stories you never can really pin it down you're always anticipating you having that sweet anticipation of getting to the bottom line answer some of the things i think this book lacks is the understanding of vibrations this is a neuroscience book so angle that carmen takes is always through a scientific angle not so much through vibrations or communication or game that's not something that this book is going to spark in you it's an influence book more dedicated toward business however you can see how memories are hugely influenced and these memories can be plotted into you through television they're not real experiences they're memories of images or assumptions so that's the gist of optics how visuals play into the game of influence so i found out about this through mike sinovich and scott adams so i would stick to some of these books that they are reading this is a top-notch recommendation as well as the other book i read shadow man who cernovich recommended as well stick with books and thanks for listening